good afternoon everyone. I welcome you all to today's webinar on techgeek.com. Today's topic is Android app development mastering data storage techniques. We are delighted to have Mr. Vineet Agarwal with us. Vineet has 7 plus years of extensive experience in top telecom companies in India. He has been developing projects in Android and J2ME from last 8 years. Vineet has passion for Android and he loves sharing his knowledge and expertise in different forums. Uh, you can ask your questions by typing in the chat pane available in webinar control panel. Your questions would be answered during the question and answer sections of, uh, section of this webinar. So without further delay, I invite Vineet to present this webinar. Over to you Vineet. Thanks Keshav. And uh, f first of all, I would uh, like to thank, thank uh, Tagit for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present my ideas again to Android community. Friends, today our topic is Android Mastering Data Storage Techniques. Well, data storage is one of the major points in any Android application on any mobile app development. There are some techniques which uh, I would like to share with my fellow Android people and uh, that will help them to plan their apps in good manner. So before proceeding I would like to tell about something about myself. I am uh, been in the industry for the last nine years and uh, currently working as technical head in mobile technology in Bikret. Bikret is uh, one of the leading players in mobile space and uh, has been voted as uh, 34th place in most valued workspace in uh, India by Delight. Some of the major projects uh, you know, Android is done by me with Samsung Movies and with the education and uh, they are learning of firmware of devices. So while designing these applications I uh, I got a thought that why don't share the experience uh, with the fellow and uh, my Android community. So based on this I started uh, uh, this uh, session and, uh, and I'll let us uh, see what we will learn. So these are topics which we will cover. The first one is uh, what would be typical client server architecture in mobile space. The idea here is uh, to tell you that how uh, typical mobile uh, client server architecture takes place and uh, how you should go about it. Then uh, we would cover data storage options in Android. We will cover all the major Android topics, shared preferences, internal storage, external storage. Then uh, we will cover one of the major topics, SQL databases. A lot of people have uh, an idea that uh, have whether we do XML, JSON, but these are some of our transport technologies in data storage mechanism. So, and uh, what sort, uh, what type of network connection which you know, we should use. So, I would also give you my insights to over that also. So, here is a typical client server architecture. As you can see that. Uh, there is a web service. So like you see these days, uh, not, uh, almost all the major providers have come up with a web service for example like Facebook, Twitter and all. And even you can design your own web service also. For example, like uh, uh, you need to get a list of movies from your database. So you can just design a web, .NET based or PHP based web service, JSP based web service and uh, uh, what you have to do from your Android application that you need to make an HTTP call to get data from the server. After getting the data from the server, the web service will return either XML or JSON in response. Then you have to design an XML, XML or JSON parser that will transform that response and you can then store the data into your database or file system. So by database I mean SQLite database or uh, you can also uh, store your data if your data is very very large so you can store data in MySQL database or uh, web also. Apart from this uh, there is another mechanism of file system. You can store your data in a 
uh, file system also. After storing the data in SQLite database or file system, what you have to do, you have to just to fetch a data from a database or file system to show in your activity. So typically, this is a, a typical mobile client so an application, any application, I would say like Facebook, Twitter and all anything. For example, just giving a small example, uh, like uh, you need to get uh, uh, user information, user profile information basically from uh, your uh, Facebook uh, and has a uh, web service. So what you can uh, do then you just make a HTTP call, pass the data which uh, you are getting and um, whether it can be external JSON or uh, you can then store a data in uh, your database. The idea here is that you don't have to make the call again and again because mobile devices are very resource intensive devices. So you need to take care of that. The more uh, the data you can just make us, you can just make it so that uh, your data is saved at appropriate place and you can just fetch the data afterwards. We can take another example like color, we have a popular web service of Flickr where we store uh, photographs. So what we can do just uh, make a HTTP call get a Flickr return JSON. So we can just pass that JSON and store in our database. So the idea is that we don't have to make call again and again because passing images is a very Herculean task and uh, although mobile networks have been improved but uh, still a uh, lot of time has been taken. So we will also cover that how and how much time is taken during uh, passing uh, in the, uh, the end of session. So these are some of the popular data storage options, options in Android. The first one is shared preferences. Shared preferences help us to store permit in a private primitive data in a key value pairs. The second one is internal storage. You can store private data on the device memory. A uh, lot of people have uh, these days have uh, smartphones. So smartphones, I would say, like suppose uh, you have a Samsung Galaxy S2 having 16 GB memory of internal storage. Uh, so that's a lot of internal sto storage. So you need not to store your data on external storage. So you can take advantage of that uh, internal storage and store your data in, uh, in your phone internal storage. Then external storage is always available. You can store public data on external storage. But uh, I would like to tell you that uh, external storage uh, is not available. External storage is not available in uh, all the phones. For example, Google Nexus S. So Google Nexus S uh, is uh, does not have external storage, and you can you can insert external SD card. So that point of time, internal storage is very much useful. Then SQL databases. You can just store structured data in a private database. And uh, last one, network connection, you can store data on the web with your own network server. Uh, Android also provides content provider, an optional component that exposes read and access to the application data. For example, like uh, you, just take an example of contacts. You have contacts in uh, your uh, phone book. So phone books is a totally different application. So to get the data of phone book in your app, so you can use the phone book content provider available by Android and uh, in insert the data into your app. The cont content providers are outside of the scope of this session. So we will cover uh, these five topics, say preferences internal storage, external storage, exploit databases, and network connection. Well, share preferences. During days of J2ME and all, uh, like, uh, there were a lot of problem of NADDB. J2ME, when it started, uh, it was uh, have a record storage, which was buggy, actually. So at that point of time, sometimes we need to, even we need to store 
our login name, data, and a password also in a in a on a MySQL database in a, on the server. But uh, with uh, uh, but uh, the share preferences to solve this issue basically. You don't now you don't have to store a lot of data in a, a small data basically in a, in a SQL database. Suppose that you have just have two values and uh, those two values are login name and password. And uh, you want to ensure that uh, that uh, your session should be maintained. So what you can do, you can just uh, make a user enter login name and password and store the data in CFNs. Storing data in CFNs has a lot of advantages. When you leave the application also, so when you and uh, launch the application again, you will see the same uh, user uh, logged in. So the session will be saved. Your session will be saved basically in your uh, in Android app. So you don't. So you don't need not to log in again and again. Another advantage is uh, like suppose that uh, you are getting uh, some uh, set of data from a web service, and uh, you just want to make a call to that web service after a fixed duration of time. So you can just set a set a safe preference in your app that uh, just make a automatic call to that web service after 30 minutes. So lot of advantages are there. We will cover an uh, example soon over the safe preferences. So if I say that to basically safe preferences uh, is very useful when uh, an activity now, when uh, whenever you save a user interface state each time it moves to background, then uh, the same way state should be presented when the activity returns to foreground, even if the process has been killed or restarted. But there is uh, one uh, key point. Suppose uh, your battery got discharged, phone, phone battery got discharged, and uh, you are uh, doing your app, and uh, at that point of time, your preference will not be able to store your data. So what to do in that case? Android provides on save and send state handler. It persists your state when the activity becomes eligible for termination by resource hungry runtime. So what it means that uh, if your uh, activity is closed uh, or uh, by, uh, when the software resources are automatic or discharged and at that point of time you can use uh, on save and send state will maintain that state and uh, it will restore that state when you log the application again. So let's start with some uh, an example. Before that, I would uh, like to move uh, to SQL databases also because the, our example covers both SQL databases and SQL preferences. Well, SQL databases. With SQL, you can create independent relation databases for your application. You can use them to store and manage complex structure application data. SQLite is a lightweight open source JSON database management system. It has been implemented as a compact C library including Android software stack. Each SQLite database is an integrated part of the application that created it. This reduces external dependencies, minimize latency, and simplify transaction login synchronization. And it's extremely reliable too. So, suppose that uh, you get uh, a list of movies in your app and uh, the movie database contains uh, around 1000 of movies. So it would be very bad that you fetch a uh, 1000 movie and uh, you fetch, uh, just suppose you fetch uh, around uh, 10 movies and uh, you just close the app and you see, okay, those movies are not in my app. So you make an STDP call again and uh, fetch the data. So to prevent that kind of thing and to prevent uh, network calls again and again, uh, and that provides you SQL database, what you can do, you can just store the movies in a list of movies in SQL database. 
and uh, show your uh, the data from your SQL database. You can create a mechanism on uh, to server, or you can create a CRF that to make a call to my web service after after every and 30 minutes. So if there is any addition of data, so I, now you will get the data, and you can just update the UI with that data. So in that case, uh, SQL databases are very much uh, useful. So let's see some examples. So the example which we are doing a small list application. It's a dynamic list. So what we will do So this is our dynamic list. You can see a blank scheme. So you can just press a menu button, add a new item. So I just add a new item called tag gig and set it to my list. I add one more item. webinar. Now what I do, I just close my app. And you can see that uh, I open my app again and still I can view text webinar in my edit text box, box. So this is due to share preference. What I have done that uh, I store this value in share preference and uh, when I launch my app again, uh, I did text also the webinar, text to uh, text word. So basically, I'm what I'm doing that uh, I'm st uh, storing this data in a SQL database, and uh, after storing and getting the data from SQL database in my list. So let's see my database. So to view my database, uh, what I will do, I will go to window and uh, in this so view other file explorer so in the file explorer you can see there is a folder called data in data there is one number of folder called data basically this is uh, your uh, file structure of the emulator so in the, basically in the emulator you can see there is a folder of data data some uh, corresponds to your internal storage then you go to data again here you can see list of all packages so let's see our package in the to do list db our package name is com dot example dot to do list one so let's search for that package and uh, you can see there is a package called com dot example dot to do list one. Here you can you will find a folder called databases, and here you can find a database called to do list dot db. So what you can do, you can just fetch this database, just pull it, and save it on your desktop. We have a tool called Exploit Database in a browser. It's not uh, embedded, so you can just uh, uh, download it from Google. So what Exploit Database Viewer does that uh, it uh, shows uh, uh, DB information, and you can uh, also it also gives you liberty to uh, add and delete data. So what you can do, you can just file open database and just search for your database. Say to do this database open. So you can see that uh, we the two values which we have created tag webinar are here, and with some custom fish and date values also. 
uh, SQL Database UI is a very useful tool, and I will rec recommend you to use this tool to, to view, list or, uh, view your database. Let's go through code. I will I would like to tell you that all this code is uh, would be uh, available to you, and you can just mail me at my email ID, gmail.com So get these codes. I will mail you these codes. So basically, we have an activity called to do list. Let's straight away goes to on create. In on create, you can see that we have created a list view object, and and edit text on her object. So what we are doing on clicking edit text and press basically enter key. So we are storing the value into database. So this is our database called to do db adapter. So let's see what this matter. Before this, I would like to tell you over by what uh, all these matters means. Basically, the recommend method to create a new SQL database is to create a subclass of SQL Open Helper, where we can execute SQL command to create tables in the database, to write and read from database called get activable database and get readable database respectively. So we have two methods: get activable database and get readable database. And uh, what we have to do whenever we want to create a SQL database, first we have to create a class, and uh, now we have to extend a class with SQL Open Helper to so, uh, query in a SQL database. So we can use a query method. A query method accepts uh, uh, various type of queries: projection, selection, columns, grouping, even more SQL. Uh, I think now would be much familiar to these terms. Well, I would also like to recommend that people must learn SQL, uh, and so it would uh, help them to uh, query and uh, write queries over the SQL database. Every SQL query will return a cursor object that points to all those found by query. So basically, whenever whenever you query, so on returning it. Now throws your cursor object. That cursor objects take, uh, stores information of all the uh, of all the results, and you can get, uh, navigate the results and read it in the rows and columns. So let's see. You can see in the to db adapter, we first create a database that is to do list or db. Then uh, we have a table also to do items. You can see that uh, table name here is to do items. We have created three type of fields: underscore id, task, case, and date. So what we are doing that uh, a to do db open helper we just create a class to do db open helper that extends SQL open helper. Now this is our database query. Create table, database table with this in, uh, value key ID, and we in, uh, we have given a primary key to ID, and a key task, and key creation date, and we execute the query in on create of SQL Open Helper class. SQL Open Helper class also contains an on again method. So it will now uh, output the old table and create the, a new one. To open the database, uh, we have a tblper dot get writable database in writable mode. As it will open in uh, readable mode, we can close the database by using db dot close. Now this one is very important matter called insert task in Android. Uh, uh, all the databases basically so like suppose that you want to insert a new values so what you will do you will create a content values object content value is a basically a synonym to rows in android and uh, you create a content values object put the data in that object and uh, that on uh, object in, uh, will be stored in your, in your database so suppose you want to create a task 
application data database table. So now in, in, your, in your database table, so you can just uh, store the value and uh, it will store in the database table. Similarly, you can remove task by using delete method. You can also use the db update method to update the database. So what we are doing here in the to-do list activity after setting a task. So whenever we start the app, now we first open the database, the clicking database object, and on clicking uh, edit text object, we store the value in database. And uh, in update array, you can see that uh, we are getting the value from database and uh, in, uh, and uh, modifying the adapter. Now, how where we are using save preferences? You can see that on on pause, in, uh, on pause, what we are doing, we are creating a save preference UI state. Save preference is an editor object, so we are storing uh, values in uh, that editor object and committing it. And you can see whenever we start the app, we call a destroy UI state method. What is destroy UI state method does? It takes a uh, uh, preferences uh, uh, object and uh, uh, just see that uh, is there uh, uh, value is there. So suppose that uh, uh, like whenever you create an edit text, so at that point time we are setting a variable called adding. It just check that that value is true or not. If that value is true, then it adds that uh, uh, set that text to the edit text object. So this way we have seen that uh, how we save uh, the database and uh, objects basically. Our next topic is uh, internal external storage. Well, internal external storage is one of the major topics I would say because a lot of time suppose that uh, you have some for, and, uh, Files basically which uh, you want to uh, basically for example like you have a CSV file and uh, you are taking a data from that and uh, you are taking uh, data from files you can take images a lot of things are there and you can't just keep everything in your SQL database so file is a good mechanism and you can just take data from uh, from those file system and uh, take your uh, in application. So we can save files directly on device internal storage. By default files save to internal storage are private to our application and other applications cannot access them. When does you uninstall our application these files are removed. So you can write a file by using uh, open file output method. This will return a file output stream and uh, you can just try to file by using write method. We will just do an example over this and then you can close the stream with close method. To read a file, you can now just call open file on a input with the file name to read. This will return a file input stream. Read bytes from file with read method, then close the stream with close method. So let's see. Very simple example, and uh, we'll just teach you that how you can do internal storage. So suppose that uh, we say to welcome to TechGeek webinar. We save it. Now this data is in our files. We just load it. So we are loading the data from file and let's see where this data is. So we will just go to file explorer.
the package name is come to example hello file 2 so let's see where is here here it is files so I just uh, pull this file from device save it on desktop so you can see the text is there this is a beauty of android and uh, you can just uh, see that how we are doing a simple example we have just two buttons save button and a load button on clicking the save button we are uh, opening a file output output stream object we are creating a file output stream object opening the file output we have just uh, mentioned a file called sum.txt and uh, write the file uh, to that output stream if there is any IO exception so we are catching, the, catching it on loading the button we are creating an input stream object open the file sum.txt creating a reader and uh, just reading the data form by using input stream.read and uh, set text in our text view in a edit text view. So this is your internal storage. Now what about external storage? See maybe for some people don't know but you can also do external you can also test external storage in your Android emulator. So just go to AVT manager you can see this this is my tag gig emulator press edit so if you whenever you create a SD card on a emulator you can just mention the size of SD card suppose that I mentioned 256 MB and you can just press create, uh, create the AVD and it will just create it for you so now you have virtual SD card with you but uh, I would recommend that uh, you to test your application on real device because uh, whenever you can have a 256 MB or 512 MB it's okay but if you create uh, around 2 GB or 3 GB space in a webinar so uh, 2 GB or 3 GB SD card so it will take you space in your text you space in your device system also and uh, your emulator would be very slow so my request is that you always take uh, advantage of uh, your Android device to test it so let's see this example so a very small example actually it's uh, just uh, basically just having a text called hello world in your external SD card so it's a reading from a SD card called hello world so let's see that how we are doing here in external storage files to external storage are well readable and can be modified by the user when they enable USB mask storage to transfer files on a computer. External files can disappear if the user mounts the external storage on a computer or removes the media. You can check media availability by calling media availability by calling get external storage state before use. See my my recommendation is that whenever you do an external SD card operation just check the media whether it's available or not. So you can always check it by using get external storage statement method. I just giving you an example like uh, this is very useful. Suppose you have, you have three devices. One device has external SD card with you. One device has very low internal storage and one device has good external SD card. So you have three different devices having one device having no SD card, one device having good amount of internal SD card also, uh, also external SD card also and third one is having a low internal SD, uh, no internal SD card but only external SD card. Now there is a point here, a very good point and a policy of Android also. Android takes internal, uh, when you call this method called external, get external storage state. So Android doesn't know the difference between uh, the difference between internal SD card and external SD card. See, there are three things. First is internal storage. 
second is internal SD card and third is external SD card. Taking example of Samsung devices, so Samsung has 16 GB internal SD card and around, uh, in fact uh, 1 GB something internal storage memory and uh, external SD card you can just fit at around 10 GB just if you you know, fit an external SD card. So when you will check uh, and basically like uh, for by using this method and suppose that you do an external SD card so this method will still return true because it will just check the it will take the internal SD card as your external SD, uh, as your external SD card. So in that case is uh, you might face issues. So to access the files on external storage, use and get external storage directory. The small tip: if you want to hide your files from media scanner, media scanner is whenever just uh, open your phone and whenever you open your Android phone, you will see a media scanner scanning the files. So to hide your files from media scanner, you can just include an empty file name called dot no media in your external file directory. It will prevent Android media scanner from reading your media files and including gallery of music. So let's see the example. So you can see, you can see that uh, we have created a file name called test.txt. Let's see where this file is. No, oh, sorry. It would be an external SD card. External SD card is your MNT folder. You can see here this MNT folder is your external SD card. So in external SD card, you can just see there's a cool folder called test underscore folder which we have created. And in test underscore folder, you can see a file called test .txt. So if you will, you can see the text hello world here. So what you can do just uh, create a SD card object, create a file by using environmental environment dot get external storage directory dot get path. You can just check the path, then check whether this file exists or not, and uh, you can you have write access or to that or, or not. Then create a directory. For direct case of directory, you can use mkdir method. If data exists, and uh, so you can just uh, create a new file, and in that file you can just open a file or post stream and uh, write your data. Similarly, for reading a file, you can just uh, create a read file object and create a test folder. In that test folder, you can just uh, check whether it exists or not, and uh, read the data from that file input stream. So in this way, you can uh, just uh, check out your data in internet and uh, external SD card. So so far we have learned about the shared preferences, SQL databases, internal and external storage. Now network connection. Android includes two HTTP clients, HTTP UI connection and Apache HTTP client. Both support HTTP streaming uploads and downloads, configure timeouts, IP version 6 and connection pooling and all. But the major thing is that a lot of developers are confused that when I have to use HTTP UI connection and when I have to use Apache HTTP client. See, Apache HTTP client is stable. 
and they have a few bugs also. But la the size of API is very large, and for uh, mobile devices, it's uh, not uh, recommended. So large size of this API makes it difficult to improve it without breaking compatibility. And in fact, Android team also stops work, uh, working on uh, Apache HTTP client. HTTP URL connection, it's a general purpose lightweight HTTP client and it's suitable for most applications. But what uh, Google uh, recommends that use uh, Apache HTTP client till SDK 2.2 is prior. After prior, you should use HTTP URL connection. The reason being HTTP URL connection is so buggy prior to prior. In particular, calling close method on a readable input stream, it will put in a quick position of connection pool. Although you can work around this by disabling a connection pooling. The API is simple and small size makes it good, great fit for Android. Transparent comp compression and response testing reduce network uh, use, improve speed, and save battery. So this way you can just decide at which uh, uh, library you should use. Another major point during network operations is comes out of XML passing. There are three passes which would I use? DOM, SEX, or POL. With, with this graph you can see the, the passer performance. So you can see that uh, for small file size, DOM pass is uh, okay. SEX passer is also okay and full pass is also okay. The defense comes with medium and then with large. So you can see that sex pass is taking less time compared to DOM and pull passes. You can further reduce this timing by effective thread management. So like uh, using async task handlers and all so you can use uh, further reduce the time. Other things which you can use is that uh, Table data uh, small and uh, have your size of XML to be small. Uh, just remember that more the size of XML, more it will take time to pass. So, what's DOM parser? The DOM parser works by passing an XML file into a native infrastructure. It typically uses the most memory of, uh, of net three passes. So, it is most memory of three passes and we don't have memory and write. So, therefore, I always uh, reject DOM passer. A sex passer works by having user implement a class with a method handlers for various events such as finding text or attributes. Where pull passer works by creating a loop that continues to request the next event and can handle that event directly within a loop. So based on your requirements, you can either use a sex passer, pull passer, although my recommendation is using sex passer. So passing uh, and uh, please keep, uh, try to keep the size of XML as small as possible. There is no use of keeping uh, waste data in your XML because uh, for the uh, web operations, it's okay because uh, we have a lot of bandwidth. But in mobile devices, there is shortage of bandwidth. So please keep the XML file size small. Another major uh, point comes between JSON. Uh, people say JSON XML. XML is most popular format. But JSON is coming these days. If you see f Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, all are coming with uh, JSON popular formats. And it's recommended for Android devices also does not take up a lot of space. Another thing is that JSON is very native data structures, so native Java data structure, so therefore it takes a, it's, a, it's a simply faster simply to an XML. But uh, again, it depends on scenario to scenario also, but generally it's faster. So let's see that uh, about XML passing.
although the example which I have uh, basically will not show you much difference, so I'm not running it. This I'm just showing the implementation. So this example actually what it does that uh, it uh, passes the list of QX from a server. It's a USB server. So what it does that uh, we have a URL and uh, just to tell you that URL it would uh, help you then better. Uh, we have defined a uh, URL instinct.xml file. So you can see this is a list of latest earthquakes and uh, coming all over the world. So if you can see this XML file, you can see that uh, there is a root tackle feed, then uh, some sub -text. The information which we want is this, ID, title, when the update has come, uh, when uh, this earthquake has come, the location of earthquake. So these are the four things which uh, we want in our app. So the tag which we are interested in is in entry. So you can just see that uh, there is a tag called updated title here in feed also and uh, in entry also. So we have to do a mechanism. So in the way we can just uh, differentiate it. So taking example DOM parser. So in a typical DOM parser what you would do? In a typical DOM parser, basically you have basically after creating a HTTP URL connection, you will just care and get the and getting a response code. So if your response code is okay, you can, you will create an input stream. Uh, just all these actually is a sex based parser, so I would come to it later. Let's first move to DOM based parser. Yeah, see input stream and you create a document builder factory object. After that you create a document builder. Then you pass that quick feed by using document object. Then you create a document element. Then in DOM parser go by notes notes by notes. So you create a you in a create the entry node and uh, just check the uh, just store the value of entry node in your entry element and then store the value of subsequent elements and in this way you can just pass it and uh, store the data in your data structure so you can say that you can see that's a lot of code now uh, but uh, another thing and although it's uh, easier to understand but uh, i would still come the sex page parser now for sex page parser what we are doing i am just you know passing uh, basically i am just calling this my passing is for january is the uh, defined method so what we, i am doing i have created xml parser of java so this is my sex page xml parser it's create extending the default handler so what I'm doing here, I am creating a sex parser factory instance, creating a sex parser factory object and create a XML leader object to handle the content. And uh, I create a variable called bnt. bnt corresponds to your entry element and I set to false. In sex parser, there are three methods called start element, characters and n element. Start element checks the element at start point, characters get the data from that element and n element uh, now checks the data at uh, checks the element at endpoint. So at us at a start element, we will first check that whether we encounter with entry element. So whenever your parser encounter with entry element, so it will just make this variable true. Then we will see that uh, if we got this link element, if we get the link element, then uh, we and has so as you can see that link element is here also. and uh, in entry also. So we will check that if uh, this uh, if uh, entry is true that means if this element is under entry element 
then we will uh, get the and have a look at the attributes. So attribute has href, so you can see this is the attribute name. So we just put the value in the attribute. At the end element, we just uh, check uh, that uh, if a uh, tag is in a title and it's in entry. So we just put a data nesting builder and can see to get that value. Again, we uh, and we done the same similar kind of thing for the element also. So this way we create the sex place XML parser. So the advantages of the sex place XML parser is that uh, you can just keep data as small as possible. At the end of the, at the end you can just store the data in the object. So this is the way you create a uh, XML passing. Similarly, I would like to show you a JSON based example also. See, it's a Flickr based web service, and uh, what it does that it uh, gets a uh, Flickr uh, run uh, images from uh, your Flickr based web service. So what we do that uh, we have just taken an async task. Async task is very useful for many night does useful and uh, management. So moving straight away to uh, our new use case. We just create an input stream and uh, get a uh, data entering builder or reading the data and appending it. We create a JSON class object. Basically this uh, feed is written here JSON. So we create a JSON object. In this JSON object actually we have array in our object called data. Then uh, we can have get the uh, uh, object called uh, we get uh, the photos object. Another photo subject we have a array called photo. So we get a JSON array and uh, store a data photo array in that. And then uh, we just create a photo array and uh, get all the values in the, the photo data JSON array object in that photo array by just passing through it. So you can see that uh, uh, JSON array is uh, very useful and uh, basically it's very smaller too. So in this way you can create a lot and have, uh, do a lot of things. So this is our session and uh, I would say that uh, and my recommendation is that whenever you create uh, and take basically operations and all so and data storage operations. So please keep in mind about the spread management and all everything because it gives you an ample opportunity to design effective and web based applications. Keep in mind about the HTTP client, HTTP connection, and I think sandwich also come up. So this is all about the now basically the session and uh, I would like to, to say at the end of session I will also say that if you have any queries so you can always contact me at vmobile.gmail.com and get the course and you can ask me the suggestions on the, uh, on the email also. So I would like to invite uh, if any questions are there so I'd like to answer those questions. Yes, uh, the questions are already shared with you. Can you please find the questions in the question form?
So we are just welcoming the questions and we are uh, answering this. There was one question that uh, uh, it's uh, important for uh, people that about Java actually that uh, you should know Java to learn Android or not. Well, I would say that uh, for uh, learning Android, the major thing is the OOPS concept. So if you are uh, very effective in OOPS concept, so you will not find any problem in learning Android. But uh, recommendation is Java because uh, Android uh, programming is done in basically Java. So even the .NET, .NET based people and, uh, and uh, can also move to uh, .NET, .NET based people also can uh, move to Android. So what you need to know basically is the OOPS concept. Another thing is what I would like to say that uh, there is a one more question over uh, the share, uh, share preference that we, we should uh, use share preference to store the login values or not. So, so basically sessions uh, share preference are, meant, uh, are there to maintain uh, preferences. So you should always use share preferences in, uh, in this uh, task. So disadvantage is there always. And uh, one more question uh, from uh, Anand is uh, about uh, SQLite databases. See, SQLite database, I would say uh, for SQLite database, the question is that uh, about SQLite database viewer. So, SQLite database viewer is a recommended tool. You can also use SQLite database you know, with uh, ADB, but uh, ADB takes a uh, lot of time. So. I always prefer to use SQLite database in a form SQLite database viewer. So this uh, helps you to uh, make an uh, uh, effective uh, DB mechanism. Actually, Android is not bundled with the coming up with any SQLite database tool. Uh, some other tools are coming up there, but they are not effective. So Anand, I would uh, just recommend that uh, uh, don't uh, uh, always use SQLite database viewer and always use and uh, devices for test never test on emulators that's my net uh, basic, uh, recommendation to all my viewers Uh, there is uh, some question from uh, Mr. Vikas Sharma that on which technology Android works. So basically Java, uh, it was on Java. There is one more question from Ravi Kiran that how to create a web service. So Ravi actually web service uh, is actually J2E part of you can just create a web service in J2E or uh, .NET base. So you have to learn server based programming for that. So a question from Praveen is how to create APK file with existing SQLite database. See if like you want to create SQLite uh, existing SQLite database, so you can take exam, an advantage of uh, assets folder. So you can always uh, store your existing SQLite database in assets folder and uh, store the values there. A question from Ravi Teja is where do we store data internal mem? Uh, we store data, internal memory or external memory and uh, using SQLite database. See it in internal memory. 
a question from Yeso Banta Bhai is uh, so can we access the shared data outside the environment from by uh, .NET or uh, PHP app? See, it's not clear what we mean by shared data actually. Uh, but uh, I think uh, if you have uh, outside the environment, uh, uh, it's not uh, accessible. Like if it's from internal space, it's not accessible. Basically, you have to always call uh, uh, database uh, database. Can we implement MVC and Android? Well, Adnan, MVC is already implementing in Android. Basically, views are view-based structure controllers and uh, model are now always there actually. So, you basically, but uh, now you have to, you are always been programming in MVC structure in Android. A question by Chaya, at the time of exit the app, if I kill the process, then will save, preference will save my data. Yes, it will save your data. No, sorry, if you kill the process, so if you kill the process, then it will not save the data because uh, what it will do that uh, at, at that point of time, you can save, use on save instance handler. A question by Nagender is, uh, can I insert my menu item in third party intent? Uh, suppose I'm opening native voice recorder for my application. I want as soon as record will current display using cancel. So it's automatic. Yeah, you can insert your menu item in, in third party intent. A question from Jessing, how to use the one on-click method into two activity? Is it possible that on-click listener code use that uh, two activity on-click uh, listener? No, you can't uh, use like that. Uh, sir, uh, the question was to say, sir, when I ever, uh, whenever the on is called, will it always create a new database even though the database already exists? No, basically it will update the database. A question by Uganda is, uh, if you get some time, can you please throw some light on ADB and SQLite from command prompt? Uh, well, Uganda, uh, you can just mail me at my email id, vinikmobile.gmail.com. And uh, I have an Excel sheet now which I will send you with ADB commands. A question from Muhammad is, uh, I have to switch the activity without making POS intent null. This is possible. Yes, this is possible. A question is, how to find a JSON XML API URL for a web app website? Example one for how to find a JSON API URL. Well, Subramanya, your question is not clear. I would request that please uh, and, uh, send a question again. A question by Mastanwali is, uh, I know how to pass, but I don't know how to send data. Okay, so uh, you know how to pass, but how to send data? So send, you want to send data to what? Suppose that you want to send data to your list view, so you can just create a data bin object and uh, save the data in, stor in the storage and uh, using the getters and setters, you can just always get the data in your list view. Or send of data, if you are speaking of SMS, then you can send the data in SMS and all also. Uh, question by Akash is the difference between DOM section and pool is not quite clear. Please clarify. See, do, now as a, I already told you that uh, the major point is that uh, now DOM parser now takes the full memory, now full tree structure, whereas sex and full parser now don't take and it it's, uh, takes a lot of memory. So sex and full parser always recommended. A question from Ayush is, uh, uh, I am new to Android and second student I always get problem external passing. Whenever I edit my external file, I use your, now you can uh, get the example code from me. It will help you. A question of Komal is among JSON and XML, which one is the best to prefer? Komal, I always uh, tell my client to use, now use JSON, but they come up with XML. Uh, Sindhu asked that, can you explain us how data storage is handled for MM application? Uh, Sindhu, can you please uh, again that what you mean by MM application? So, uh, and uh, I think that's all from my side. My email ID is uh, vineetmobile at gmail.com, v a n w e t mobile at gmail.com. So, you can uh, always uh, mail me at my email ID and send and ask me the codes and all. So, that's all from my side, friends. And it was very nice uh, talking to you. Thanks, boss.
Thanks, Vinit, uh, for taking this uh, really informative webinar. Uh, we learned a lot about uh, Android development and mastering data storage techniques. I would also like to thank our participants for making this webinar a huge success. The recording of this webinar will be uploaded on techgeek.com by tomorrow. We will keep you posted on that. So thanks again. Thanks everyone for joining the webinar. Thank you.